Hello and welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to talk about the Still MM56 Yard Boss. If you're looking to purchase one of these units new, I'll go ahead and discuss some of the common failures that we see with this unit. Or if you're looking to purchase a used one, I'll go over some of the items that you can look for before you purchase. So in just a second, I'll bring you in closer and we'll discuss some of those problems. So here I have a Still MM56 Yard Boss. And this one in particular has the power bristles on it. And this particular unit is used for artificial grass installation. And I'll get into some of that in a minute. Now this unit is available. You can get many different attachments for this thing. You can get several different type of cultivator attachments. You can get uh, a power sweep attachment, which looks like a uh, kind of for a broom, basically for doing concrete, that type of thing, smooth surface type stuff, or even grass. There is a power rake attachment and a weed eater attachment that you can put on this unit as well. So it's kind of a multi-tool piece of equipment. Now 90% of these things that we sell here in the Valley, I'm in the Phoenix area, we sell and they are used for installing artificial grass. And how you use this unit is going to greatly dictate whether or not you're going to have some of the problems that I'm going to discuss. And I'll get into that individually as I go along here. There's not a lot of them, but it just, it really depends on how it's used. First, I'll just go ahead and start off with if you're a homeowner and you're using this thing as a cultivator, um, a power sweep, that type of thing, occasional use on a weekend, you're generally not going to run into any major issues with this unit. It should last you a very long time. You may experience a couple minor things like a throttle cable or if you, know, if you have a fuel system problem just from letting it sit around, but otherwise, mechanically, you generally won't experience a lot of major issues with it. They're, they are a really good, reliable unit. Um, they hold up well. They've proven themselves to be pretty good over the years. Now, if you're a commercial customer and you're using this commercially, and you're using it specifically for artificial grass, that's a whole different world, and I'm, I will get into each detail there as well. These things do take quite a beating uh, in the artificial grass world. I've had to rebuild several of them over the years. Now there's two different ones that you may see out there. This is the older MM55 power head. Now this one here was nothing more than an FS38, if you will, weed eater head. The housing is a little bit different. The carburetor and the choke is different, but the engine architecture and everything was the same as the FS38, FS45 line trimmers. And this was the early model for the MM, which was the MM55. Now the new MM56, this basically is the FS56 line trimmer. This is that engine as well. So it'll look basically familiar. The housing is a little bit different, a little bit shorter. The air filter housing and whatnot is different from a line trimmer FS56. But otherwise, engine wise, it's the exact same thing. The throttle design between the two, between the MM55 and the FS56 are different as well. But those are the two differences. So if you do see these things, if you see a used one, it's an MM55. When you see one of these that looks a little different, you know what you're looking at. All right, so as far as the outside of the unit goes, these guards here on the front, you will see these things start to separate. Basically, they separate right along this line here and they will come apart. Um, you will see that over time. It's just kind of a flimsy plastic. They hold up okay, but if it's you're using this thing commercially and it's getting thrown in and out of trailers, uh, it may not hold up very well for you and it'll start to come apart. So you, something to be aware of with this thing to kind of be careful with it. Now the frame design on these is really strong. It's a nice piece of aluminum. It goes all the way up. The handle up here is aluminum as well. Uh, I don't see too many issues with the main frame. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever seen one break. So they are strong and they do hold up quite well. The wheel kit here, you can get these separately. They are available. Um, over time, these things will come apart. They will start to rattle apart. There's three screws down here. You want to make sure that these things are tight all the time. They will loosen up and fall apart. The wheels here, they do come off. They will get loose and start getting all cockeyed and stuff. There's two screws right here, two bolts. These things will loosen up as well. And occasionally you'll get this bracket right here. This is the adjuster bracket. This thing will snap off right here and right here around this tube. We've had to re-weld several of these or just replace the entire thing. Now the wheel kit comes with obviously the wheels and then this entire bracket and then this whole adjuster assembly right here. So it is something that is available as a replacement part if you need it. The adjuster wheel here, you just want to make sure they're tight. They will loosen up and fall off or come apart. That is common. 
and the bolt on the nut on the other side of this thing here as well it will loosen up and come off you want to just make sure that you go over all of your hardware just check everything out make sure it's snug go over it every once in a while they do vibrate a lot and then also when you're working them real hard in the ground or whatever you're doing with them you know stuff does start to come loose so that is something to be aware of now the handle itself up on the top is pretty good they're fine they um, just from use and abuse these rivets will start getting loose or the handle itself will crack up here and it'll come apart uh, I see several of these where guys are just running self tappers or sheet metal screws in here just to you know hold this thing back on just because the thing vibrated apart again a lot of it is just heavy heavy use from commercial application the throttle design on the top is is fine it holds up quite well there's no major issues with it as far as the handle is concerned, I know major trigger issues or kill switch issues, anything like that, they hold up, they're pretty strong. Now I got this thing flipped up here. Now the gearbox on these is quite good. They do hold up nice. I think I've only seen maybe one or two major failures. And again, it was a high hour unit and it just had been used commercially for grass and the thing just took a beating. So it finally gave up. Generally, I would say if you're using this thing for home use or light commercial use, you're probably not going to experience any major uh, gearbox issues with this thing. They are quite nice. Now, one thing with the gearbox, if you're looking for one of these used, let me show you what to look for. Okay, I just took the brushes off of this thing. If you're looking for one of these used, and it was used for artificial grass, you want to look for the buildup of artificial grass. This is quite common. This is nothing actually. A lot of times they will get built up so big it'll be just completely impacted in here. And what can happen here is it'll get in behind this plastic sleeve. And this is a sleeve that actually protects the seals, but that artificial grass will work its way in there and pack in there super tight and it'll actually take out that seal in the gearbox. So you wanna make sure you're cleaning this stuff out or make sure it's clean. Uh, keep an eye on that type of thing. The other thing would be if it's a really high hour unit, the way these brushes are designed, they do hit the gearbox right here. Let me get a flashlight. Now right here on the neck of the gearbox, you can see that wear mark right there. You've got one right here and you've got one right here. Now that's just from the brushes wearing and rubbing on the gearbox. That's just part of the design of the machine. Now over time, what will happen is those brushes will wear into this bolt mount right here and it'll actually wear this gearbox out to where it gets really thin and it'll actually crack it and break it and you'll lose that clamping force of the gearbox. Now again, that is a super high hour unit, one that has been used for a long time. I don't see it very often, but it does happen. So if you come across an old MM55 or something like that and it was used for artificial grass, you wanna be aware of that. You wanna check that gearbox just to make sure that it's not uh, worn completely through. These gearboxes are not cheap. They are very expensive, but they do hold up for quite a while. So that is something to be aware of with that. Now, as far as the outside of the engine goes, everything holds up quite well on these. No major issues with them. The gas tanks are really strong. They hold up well. The engine housings themselves are fine. You'll get one every once in a while, you know, like anything, if you bang it into something, you can crack or break the recoil housing or the front housing. Uh, the air filter covers, you wanna make sure that they're good and tight. These screws just go into a plastic on the inside, so you wanna make sure you do not over tighten these or use a gun on them. I prefer to just use you know, hand tools when you're tightening these, because these will loosen up over time and fall off. Then you'll have to replace that inner housing that this screws to, that's something to be aware of. Now recoil wise, most of these things come with the uh, easy start or the cushy spring, if you will. And every once in a while, we do see issues with those things, especially for the commercial guys and we can convert those over to a non easy start or a non cushy spring recoil and a lot of guys will opt to do that so i took the recoil off of this thing and while i have it off i'll go ahead and discuss the uh, cushy versus non cushy conversion if you want if you will so this is the one that came off of that unit and then this has that easy start or cushy spring and what a lot of guys will do is they'll go ahead and convert it over to eliminate that problem a lot of people don't like the way those things feel and how they start. I have a lot of people that complain about them. These are great for older people or people with, you know, have a hard time pulling on these things. But, you know, the younger guys, the landscaper guys, they don't care. They just want to be able to have direct contact and start it right away. This is the uh, part number for that recoil if you ever want to convert this thing over. 
And now the other side of the housing here, no major issues with this one at all. Again, if you, you know, if you smack these housings, they will crack and break, otherwise not a big deal. Now, as far as major engine issues or major issues with these things, one of the big factors with these is the throttle design. And what happens is this throttle will get very sticky. This one works just fine, no issues with it at all. It feels good, operates well. But over time, these things will get sticky and they will not function properly. The throttle will get hung wide open. And the big reason for that is because of dirt. Now, originally when these things first came out, I thought maybe it was because of this throttle design and that hard turn that this thing does. So we were loosening this clamp, taking it off completely and relaxing that cable a little bit, hoping to alleviate that problem. But then we found out what the major problem was and I'll show you that here in a minute. One thing to be aware of when you look at one of these things is you wanna make sure that the throttle is operating smoothly and properly. Now let me take the air filter cover off and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I got the air filter and recoil off of this thing. Now, again, going back to my earlier statement about how this thing is being used, one of the biggest Achilles heels for this unit is in the artificial grass world is sand and the artificial grass itself. So if you are using this thing for artificial grass, you are gonna wanna be aware of the sand issue. What happens is, is all that sand gets impacted all around the carburetor and in the air filter and the way the throttle design is, if you can see it down there where the cable goes into that hole, all the sand just basically works its way down inside of that throttle cable and it'll seize up the throttle cable. Now there's not a lot you can do to avoid that other than trying to keep these things completely out of the sand which is kind of almost impossible. If you've never seen these guys lay artificial grass before, basically what they do is they lay the grass down and then they have to hold that artificial turf down and they use sand to do so. And that sand can be up to an inch or more thick. So they will basically shovel all that sand on top of the artificial turf. And then that's where these machines come in is they use these brooms and they go over it repeatedly to work that sand down into the artificial grass to hold the grass down to the ground essentially. And this thing is just constantly being hosed down in, in, uh, in sand and artificial turf. So if you are using these for artificial turf, you definitely want to be aware of that. It is a common problem. Again, this, isn't, this is not something that's Still's fault or Still's problem. This is essentially, you know, just the environment that it's being used in. We've tried different things over the years, you know, whether it be like some kind of foam to pack in around it or whatnot. We've tried a couple different things and it just never seems to work. So a lot of our dedicated commercial guys, they will go ahead and pull these things apart and they'll clean them all out every once in a while to make sure they're clean. Another problem with the sand is, is the way this thing leans forward, the engine leans down you will get sand and it'll also get impacted into the choke knob itself. It'll all fall down inside the choke knob and then the choke will get sticky and it will not operate correctly as well. So again, the sand is a huge issue with these things and can cause a lot of different problems. That being said, if you're using this thing as a cultivator, you wanna be aware of it as well because of that throttle design and how it's up high and it's just an exposed hole you still can get a lot of dirt and dust that will fall down inside that throttle cable. And over time, you may experience a problem. Now, we do have some customers that use these things just as cultivators only, and I have not seen any major issues with them yet. I don't think they've come back in for throttle or any that type of thing. The biggest problem is the sand with the artificial turf. Now, as far as other engine issues, the recoil, these paws here, this is pretty typical of most of still stuff. You know, these are just plastic. These little recoil paws are just pressed into this metal housing. These things will come out every once in a while and they will fall forward into the fan housing and they will get caught in the flywheel. If you have one that's locked up or something's wrong with it, you might want to check the recoil, make sure these things are on and they're working properly and they're both present. You might be missing one. So that's something to be aware of there. Now, as far as the next major thing that I'm going to show you, i got to pull this engine off and pull this housing apart, and then I'll show you that. Okay, I pulled this engine off the unit, and I pulled the housing off of it. Now, the other Achilles heel with this thing, if you're using it for artificial grass, is the artificial grass itself. 
what happens is is these cooling fins underneath will draw in all of the artificial grass and it will blow up and it'll get all impacted in the cylinder it'll clog this thing off it'll cause it to overheat and it'll burn it up now I just did one of these the other day and I'll go ahead and I'll throw in a video here for you so you can see it now as you can see this thing is completely impacted with that artificial turf and what happened was is this thing essentially just overheated and it took out the piston and you can see the piston damage here from it just getting hot so this is a major problem with these things if you don't stay on top of the maintenance you will overheat them and burn them up now this one here obviously is not that bad it just has some tiny pieces of it but you can see all of the dirt rocks all of the stuff that gets thrown inside these housings and again it's just a product of its environment there's really not a lot you can do about it again we've tried to put foam in here to try to seal off some of these ports you know to slow that down but it just seems to find its way in as well and you can see how dirty this carburetor is and this one's not bad a lot of times this will just be sand it'll be completely underneath the carburetor will be completely impacted with sand and then the artificial grass will get on the cylinder and it'll melt to the cylinder melt to the muffler and then that also clog the cooling fins as well now I have a used cylinder here from a unit that we uh, classified as dead it was burned up pretty bad and this one had been rebuilt several times but you can see how the grass just melts itself to the cylinder and the muffler this one burned up pretty good and put a pretty good scar in the cylinder and we couldn't fix it as far as other major engine issues with these things there's not a whole lot they actually hold up pretty well considering uh, even for the artificial turf guys they hold up quite well now the clutches on these things every once in a while they will get noisy um, you will hear them start to squeal really loudly kind of like the old Briggs and Stratton uh, starter clutches they squeal real bad so you will have to kind of do some maintenance on the clutch every once in a while now under heavy use and a, a high hour unit these clutches will get worn to where they they're really flopping around pretty badly or they will wear out the drive end of it really bad and you'll need to replace the clutch itself or the drive shaft on the unit itself as far as piston and cylinder are concerned again the failures that we see are due to either overheating or some sort of debris getting in the intake that type of thing engine wise they're actually pretty good now they will loosen up and vibrate pretty badly especially under the uh, artificial grass or even the tiller application because they are shaking these things to death and the mounts will come loose every once in a while or the engine pans will come loose it is a split engine pan design so they will the screws will back out and you might notice some leaking down here over time but if you're using this thing at home or for light commercial use you may not experience that at all now here's an old engine this engine here this was the piston out of that engine and then you can see how it has a split crankcase design the cylinder goes on top of this and then the engine pan on the bottom now this engine pan here broke on the bottom where the bottom recoil mount bolts to which is down here and that's just from use a lot of times this customer in particular here he will take his recoil housings off and clean out as much as he can underneath of there and get everything clean so he's always taking his recoils on and off and his guys just got a little overzealous with that and broke it off but that is something every once in a while you'll see not too often on these units though and then you want to be careful with these recoils and how they bolt on because every once in a while if they get stripped out these holes here on this engine housing wear out and you might have to put a time cert in there or a really big screw or a bolt or something like that and you can see this one's got quite a bit of wear but again this recoil has been off many 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 times so they just they do wear out over time something to be aware of there otherwise piston and cylinder on these things the cylinders on these units are really really good the the chrome that they use in these things hold up extremely well basically if we get a piston that's burned up like that we can usually 
hit this cylinder with a hone and it'll clean up no problem at all so the cylinders are very robust on these units they just they never seem to wear out very rarely ever do i see them wear out completely or to where i cannot rebuild them a lot of times i just have to put a new piston kit in and a seal kit which comes with the crank seals and then all the gaskets and everything but otherwise engine wise the connecting rods the crankshafts the crank bearings they all hold up well i, I haven't seen any major issues with those coil wise on these units the coils are pretty good they hold up every once in a while i will get a failure because of again if the grass gets impacted in here it will cause it to overheat and you might see a failure but if you're not using it for artificial turf uses generally i don't see any major issues with the coils they hold up well every once in a while i will get one where the muffler bolts break off in the head it is very rare it doesn't happen too often because the head is aluminum and these are steel it does make it a real big pain in the butt to get the bolts out of the head sometimes i can't get them out and i have to replace it the cylinder itself if you have one you notice that it's loud or a bolt's missing or loose or something you might want to check that that one of the bolts may have broken off in the head so as far as everything else with this thing engine wise they're really good they hold up they actually hold up quite well the biggest thing again is just the dirt or the sand and the artificial turf so it just really depends on how you use this thing now again if you're using this thing for home use you may not experience any of these issues whatsoever but if you're using this thing commercially especially for artificial grass you definitely want to be aware of these problems now the air filters on these things are pretty good they're a nice big air filter and they do a really good job of keeping the dirt out the biggest thing is this inner baffle right here is you want to make sure that this thing is in there otherwise the air filter cover will not clamp down onto the air filter and squeeze it properly you'll have a gap and it will leak and it will suck dirt in there so you want to make sure that that spacer is in there now one other thing that you may see is leaking tank vents these things are kind of notorious for the tank vent leaking right in here in the front you'll see this hose and then the tank vent is pressed into the tank so that hose goes from the vent and it goes into the air box here and then right in here is a little tiny hole and that's where it breathes so if you start to notice fuel on your air filter and your air filter is getting wet and the inside of your air box down here on the bottom is wet chances are pretty good that your tank vent is leaking i just think it's from vibration and use so that's something to look out for is if you do have a wet air filter or the air box is starting to get wet uh, you could have a bad tank vent now the air filter covers like i discussed earlier you can see those screws are just a really coarse screw for plastic and they screw into here and here so if you over tighten and strip these out you will need to replace this housing so you want to make sure you're careful when you're tightening your air filter housing cover anyway otherwise these things hold up well they're pretty robust i don't see any major issues with them and then the air filters are good too so there's a quick description of some of the problems that we encounter with the mm56 again it matters how this unit is being used if you're using this thing at home or if you're using it for light commercial use you may never experience any of these problems at all but if you are using it commercially or you are using it heavily especially for artificial grass there's definitely some things that you need to be aware of so if you have any questions or if you see anything else that maybe i'm missing that uh, you experience that i haven't leave a comment down below and let me know if you have any questions i'll do my best to answer them and i appreciate you watching thanks for your time